Welcome to Take Off, a points and miles podcast by 10X Travel. I'm your host, Bryce, and today we have a special surprise for you because I am joined in person by the other hosts of our podcast, Matt, Emily, Travis. How are we doing today? Doing well, thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah, doing well. Really excited. We're here in Salt Lake City. And today's theme is in person. We're going to be looking eye to eye at each other as we have our first ever podcast <laughs> debate. In the notes, they actually called it a Thunderdome. Mm. Might get a little contentious as we kind of each take sides on an issue. But before we get to that, I want to remind everyone that if you are new to the world of Points and Miles, we encourage you to go back to episodes one through six of this podcast where you learn the very basics, the fundamentals of Points and Miles, help you get up to speed so you can process the things we're going to talk about today and in future episodes. Remember that you can watch this in every episode on YouTube at youtube.com slash at 10 travel. Most of them are not going to be nearly as fun as the one where we can sit here side by side, but hopefully this one goes well and maybe we can do more of them. And for any other lingering questions, be sure to join our Facebook group, the largest Points and Miles Facebook group in the world, currently over 340,000 members. In today's episode, we're introducing a new format because we're face to face. Again, Thunderdome, we are going to respectfully argue, <laughs> strongly encourage points where we're each going to defend a different major hotel program. We're going to go through the nuances of the program, how the points work, kind of help you to uh, educate you on how these things work ultimately determine a winner at the end by, I don't know, broad consensus. We'll find a way to do it and go through some of the nuances of these different programs. Now, we each picked one, and this was done just by grabbing them, the ones that we're most familiar with. I grabbed IHG. I'll let the rest of you. I'm taking yours. Marriott. I've got Hyatt. And I've got Hilton. And I think it's important for people to know this was like a first come, first serve. So I'd be <laughs> interested Leave your comment. If you're watching on YouTube or someplace you can leave comments, leave your comment about what order you think we selected these in. Mm. I also feel like it's appropriate for you to air the context of your debate team history. As a yeah, pre-qualifier to this. Yeah. Look, yeah. Yep, look, look <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Even if they know okay. that I was you know, on the debate team in high school, even when the audience weighs that in, mm -hmm. Hilton is just so much better than all of the other hotel programs out there mm -hmm. that it's not going to make a difference. The arguments have already begun. We're going to take turns, kind of who goes first, each make the case. At the end, we're going to have kind of a, a final argument or a closing argument, if you will. But hopefully as we go through this, it'll help to show you the different nuances of these hotel programs, how you can get the most out of them. And of course, luckily for you, you don't have to choose just one, right? It's a fun Thunderdome type concept, but I think all of us participate in all of these programs, right? No, um, I'm never no. staying at Hilton again after this. I don't think. <laughs> should we, do you want to dive even, into that? Or is there a backstory? An account. Yeah, I'm actually uh, banned from all Hilton properties. Yeah. <laughs> <you know. laughs> uh, plus one to Hilton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So let's start off. Uh, the first topic here is, is the best footprint. This doesn't necessarily mean the biggest footprint for these hotels, although you could use that to support your case. We're just going to say best footprint. And up first here, we have Emily with Hyatt. Great. I don't think I'm going to win this category, but Hyatt has a lot of pros in terms of the award chart, but their footprint is not as large as any of the other hotel brands that we're going to talk about. There's around 1,300 properties within the Hyatt portfolio as of like September of last year, I believe. So since then, they've added maybe seven or 800 with Mr. and Mrs. Smith and then under Canvas, I believe it's called, the glamping resorts. So maybe we're up to 2,000 conservatively now, but there's some really high quality hotels in that small footprint. So are you going to go quality or quantity? That's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. Up next, Travis, tell us about Hilton's footprint. Yeah, well, Hilton comes close. It's not the largest footprint out of these four options. Actually, the largest footprint, I think, is Wyndham, which we're not even debating today. Mm. Um, you want to pivot? No, no. Uh, Hilton, it's a big enough footprint. That's what matters, right? It's just right. 7,350 properties worldwide. And we actually get probably the best statistic out of that. And that's why you should vote for Hilton, is for the fun points. That's one Hilton property for every state of Hawaii. For every... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> So if you take the square miles of land on Earth, excluding Antarctica, because there's no hotels there, so we're going to exclude Antarctica okay. and split up, like divide it. There's one Hilton for every 7,000 square miles, which is about the size of Hawaii. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So if you have like, Hawaii, I was like, wait, what there's one Hilton in, in the state of Hawaii? I was waiting for the cut <laughs> there to be like, let me try this again. But okay, no, no, it works. It. Yeah, yeah. All right. it works. Okay. So for fun statistical reasons, mm -hmm. Hilton. It's okay. so hard to like map Hawaii because many different islands, I can't even visualize like how big Hawaii is if you like put it over Colorado or something, you know? Yeah. So, well, when looking at states by size, it's, I think it was like roughly the size of like uh, Massachusetts. Like Massachusetts was a little larger, but it's more fun to say Hawaii, Hawaii than Massachusetts. 
Mm. Both of these are only half the size of your hometown of Houston. So you could <laughs> <with that. laughs> Is this your debate pro tip number one? Just bring in a really odd statistic <laughs> and lead with that. Look, I'm the only one with a fun statistic here. So uh, if you well, well, I'm asking. I'm looking for tips. Done yet. Half the you team hasn't gone else? yet. I'm pandering to the pro. <laughs> well, let's see what statistics you two can pull. Can, uh, can I only have, have one statistic, and that is Marriott has over 9,000 properties, the largest footprint of the programs we're debating today. So in category. <laughs> oh, sorry. You still have to go. I still have to go. But Marriott still wins. Although we do have to preface this by saying there's a bit of bias here because we did say in a Marriott property last night and we're saying in a different Marriott property tonight. So No, no bias. Very, because they're all over the place. That's true. They are all over the place. <laughs> well, And so is mine. IHG, about 6,500 locations worldwide. They're going to add about 1,500 more in the next five years. I feel like IHG has a footprint that is much bigger than most people realize because of their brands. Most people, you hear IHG hotels, but they don't use IHG, that phrase, in any of their brands, I believe. So you drive by Marriott's, they love to put big giant Marriott on the top. Same for Hilton, it's everywhere, the H with the circle around it. But IHG is kind of sneaky, but it is quite sizable, almost as large as Hilton. So footprints all looking pretty good. Yeah, I mean, footprint, it's a tough category, right? You started off by saying it doesn't have to be who has the most hotels, but I don't really know how else you differentiate it other than whose footprint equals one hotel per state of Hawaii in the world. That right. Is, That's mean, the only way to measure it. Nobody actually. can argue yeah. with that because you have to take a moment to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, let's talk about the strongest card roster. And by this, I mean the number of credit cards and the quality of those cards that can help you earn points to be redeemed at this particular hotel chain. So on this one, let's mix up the order a little bit. We start with Emily last time, I believe, right? Yeah, don't let's do it to me again. Let's go Travis not here first. Hilton. Easy. Card. Let's see the statistics. How many uh, yeah, cards yeah. per state of Hawaii does yeah. have? <laughs> Look, we're starting off strong. That's why he pivoted to me. He knew that Hilton was the right <laughs> choice. He's already moved it into first. So strong streak going here. But when it comes to the card options, I think undeniably Hilton probably has the best cards for just a number of reasons. There's three personal cards and one business card that you can get all issued by American Express. But there's no restrictions. Just because you have one of the personal cards doesn't mean you can't get the other three. While Marriott, I'm sure Matt will gladly advocate, has more cards available. Shots fired. It's really <laughs> complex Stay in your lane. to Come understand on. what the rules are between them. Sometimes when you get one, it blocks you from others. It's just so complex. The simplicity of the Hilton card portfolio, as well as the fact that you can get all four of them, just means it's easy to build up those Hilton points fast. On top of it, Hilton is the only one with whose card you get the hotel brand's top tier status. Hilton has the Hilton Honors Aspire card. It does have a high annual fee, but you get Hilton Diamond, which is the highest level status you get. So you can immediately enjoy the potential for top tier benefits like upgrades to suites, breakfast credits, etc. So when it comes to card portfolio, there's no reason anyone else stands a chance against Hilton, but I'll let you try. <laughs> we'll get to that in just a bit. First, I want to ask, does anyone here have the Hilton Aspire card? No. No. Okay. Yeah, you, you I was hoping to catch you on that one, but mm -hmm. you do have it. My man uh, <laughs> walks the walk, Yeah, uh, I'd say. So, all right, Hilton cards. Uh, up next, let's go Matt. Tell us about the Marriott cards. I understand your logic, but you kept mentioning four cards, and I'm just shocked because Marriott offers 12 credit cards split between American Express and Chase. So they don't can rely you, on one issuer. Can you go ahead and just like share the restrictions on each 12 of those with sure us? Sure can't, sure can't. <laughs> sure can't. There'll be a nice chart linked in the show notes that if you want to try and decipher it. But the opportunities are there. You can have cards issued by each issuer. However, you have to navigate that strategically. But again, I think 12 is greater than four. So I'm going to take the cake on that one. And like Travis said, on the Aspire at Hilton, you can basically buy your way to top tier status. You got to work for it a little bit, Merritt. You can only get platinum on two of their cards, the Ritz-Carlton and the Bonvoy Brilliant card. You've got to put a little bit of work in if you want to get titanium or ambassador. So now, I think it's also important to clarify, of those 12 cards, not all of them are publicly available for someone to sign up for right now. Is that right? That's correct. You may have to product change to get some of them. You can't apply outright. And again, the eligibility rules definitely do apply. Yeah. It's complex. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is even though there's 12 cards, yeah. you can't get the bonus on all 12 cards. That's correct. It's like going to a restaurant that's got a 500 page menu. You so can't actually are you, order yeah, are you everything. Are throwing shots at the Cheesecake Factory? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am. I'm not here to call out any restaurant. But just because you have more options on the menu doesn't actually mean that there are better options. Have you ever not been able to order something off of the Cheesecake Factory menu? I actually don't think I've ever been to the Cheesecake Factory. Wow. Because why would I let myself go to such a level? 
Oh, shots fired. Jeez, oh, edit shots that fired. out. Cheesecake Good factory Lord. fans. <laughs> Look, I have to have conviction for my points. That's how it's how it <laughs> true. Stand behind them. <laughs> the Mary cards are just Cheesecake Factory. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> All 12 of them. <laughs> so I'm up next with IHG's card portfolio. IHG has a very typical card portfolio. All the cards are issued through Chase. They have two personal cards, a higher end one with a $99 annual fee, and then one with a $0 annual fee, and then a business card with a $99 annual fee. The bonuses on them are quite typical, between 100 and 140,000 bonus points. That's a typical offer. I, I don't even know what it is immediately at the moment. I have had, I believe, all of these at one point in time. There used to be an additional IHG card. There was a $49 fee one. It was the IHG Travel Rewards one. That is now discontinued for new applications, but I believe it is still out there if you are a current card holder. There's no restrictions on getting multiple of these. You can get all of them pretty much at the same time, all issued through Chase. Nice, clean, and simple. Easy to stack up all their points. And really, there's not a lot of moving parts or perks that come with these cards. You do go straight to their platinum level status, which is like second highest from the top. IHG status is not particularly fantastic. We'll get to that in a minute. But their card portfolio is nice and clean, easy to understand. You can get all of them, and it's easier in quite a few points. Back to Emily. Yeah, saving the worst for last. Uh, Hyatt, I don't think I can even defend their cards, to be honest. There's two of them. There's one personal card, and there is a business card. They have historically low sign-up bonuses, so 30,000, maybe 60,000 points you're going to earn off of those, which sounds really low when you talk about pretty much any of the other brands that we're talking about, their card offers. But you do have to factor in that the award chart for Hyatt the prices are lower, so maybe your 60,000 points goes a little bit further, but there's no restrictions on getting either of them. So it's simple from that perspective, but not going to blow you away on a points earning perspective. So what I'm hearing is like Hyatt has already conceded two of the points. Hi- yeah. Mm-hmm. I hope you've got some strong ones later, Emily. I'm sorry. Hyatt I- does. Don't you worry. <laughs> Don't Hyatt's worry. a back half uh, yeah. competitor in this the, competition. The, yeah. yeah. There is something really important, a big distinction between Hilton and Cheesecake Factory over here (laughs) at IHG. And I mean, we don't even have to worry about Hyatt on this point. So Mm. Mm -hmm. is the fact that IHG, those cards are issued by Chase. So you have to be under 524 to be eligible for them. That's going to limit you because it's really an opportunity cost question. For some people, it certainly does make sense. But the opportunity cost of using those 524 slots for IHG cards versus maybe another not hotel card, but let's say a bunch of United cards. Shocker. Had to get it in. Uh-huh. <laughs> Had to get it in. Whereas when you're over 524, you can still get the Hilton cards. So you can wait till you're over 524, get the Hilton card, so they're not impacting your opportunity cost with Chase. Half of your Marriott cards are with Chase. The same I thing. I can't argue with this. Same thing applies. This. So yeah. the fact that the Hilton cards are not issued by Chase, in my opinion, is actually a really big advantage because the opportunity cost that you have to weigh in making the decision on Chase cards isn't there. Although I do feel like we have to give a slight knock on Hilton cards and the fact that most people get deceived by them. I'm looking at you right here, dear reader. How many of you have been through this situation? (laughs) You get a letter in the mail. It's like, dear Bryce, we invite you to apply for this Hilton card. It has 150,000 bonus points when you sign up. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's going to be enough to take like my entire family to Hawaii for an entire week. I'm going to get this card. So you get it. You earn the bonus. You go to redeem them. And you figure out that like an airport Hilton costs like 60,000 points a night. And you're like, oh, I feel like I've been kind of bamboozled here. So Hilton (laughs) points definitely have their upsides. All the arguments that Travis makes are fantastic. However, in my experience and talking to readers and having done this for a while, most folks' first kind of introduction to the world of Hilton points and cards is that kind of disappointing, wait a second, I thought I had like a king's ransom of Hilton points and I can book like a couple nights at the double tree at best. So as moderator, half point deduction for that one. <laughs> yeah. Moving on here, let's talk about... Oh, I like how he's not giving me an opportunity yeah, for no, a Yeah, no, no rebuttal. So no, okay. no, yeah. this is, this is, we have to keep the show going. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, next category is most consistent. Now this is kind of left intentionally broad, like consistent in product, consistent in the different different brands from one to another, consistent from areas, different continents even. So we'll leave it completely wide open. And this time we're going to start with Marriott Matt here. (laughs) (laughs) I think as we go through this, you're going to find that my passion and really trying to fight for these categories for Marriott is going to fall down and down. And this is probably the (laughs) lowest energy one that I'm going to be able to to put up here. Yeah, this is a race to the bottom for Marriott. There's no way for them to not get last place in this category, I don't think. I'm looking primarily on their elite breakfast credit consistency. If you're an elite member at Marriott, it is literally all over the place. You might get a muffin in a plastic bag at some hotels. You might get (laughs) a full five-star breakfast buffet at others and anything and everything in between. You literally just never
never know, depending on what hotel you show well, up to, you, what you're going to get. Like Ritz-Carlton hotels, they don't even have to honor. Correct, yeah. How ridiculous is it that Marriott says, oh, you've stayed with us for 60 nights this year, 75 nights, so now you're eligible to get complimentary breakfast. But some brands, like, you don't actually have to do that. Yep, yep. Mm. So there are literally some brands within Marriott that only sort of partially participate in the elite benefits. And that's super annoying when you get to a hotel and you're like, hey, I saw you had suites available. Can you upgrade me to one? And, you know, I'm platinum or titanium. And they say, no, we don't participate in that part of the program. That's happened to me before. It's really annoying. It is. Yeah. Because you do have elite status with Marriott. I do. I'm titanium, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like about once every other month in our staff slack, (laughs) Matt will be explaining how he's at a Marriott hotel and is encountering these experiences. Yeah, it's here's a muffin yeah. in a bag. Yep. But mm-hmm. I thought I was going to get a free buffet. Yeah. And the worst is when they just give you the like ten dollar yep. breakfast voucher, but <laughs> then the base breakfast is like twenty five bucks. Yeah. Well, I was going to say I think the worst is they'll comp you the continental breakfast and you can do the like twenty five dollar upgrade to the buffet or whatever. Yeah. Brutal. I'm, Right. Honestly, didn't used to be like this. <laughs> this is one that Hilton's bowing out on as well. Yeah, we part might be of, tying for I have this. A part of being yeah. like, no, you <laughs> might take the cat. Yeah, part of debate is understanding which arguments you can win, and I have two out of three so far I'm good with. Oh, is this, um, is are this you pro declaring? debate tip number two? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay. I see you're I'm trying. I'm here trying to learn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm proud yeah. of you. Yeah. Hilton's consistency is, I honestly like, might even say worse than Marriott. The hotel breakfast that you get with the diamond status actually is a credit at properties in the U.S. So you're going to get a different experience between properties in the U.S. versus properties outside of the U.S. It's not even consistent across the entire brand portfolio. The consistency within the hotel brand itself will vary. A double tree in Orlando versus a double tree in Thailand are going to be drastically different experiences that you're going to get. So the consistencies within each brand, kind of outside of the luxury brands, are pretty, it's virtually non-existent. And admittedly, this is hurting a point I made earlier, but hopefully people have already decided by now. Uh-huh. The fact that you can get top tier status with just one card means that a lot of people have it. So your consistency at upgrades is probably the lowest amongst the entire. I thought I made a comment about too. buying your way to status. Maybe I didn't. We'll yeah. have to roll the tape back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the consistency of the elite benefits that you can get, the products. I'd probably say is worse than Marriott, in my opinion. I'll gladly concede that to you. (laughs) We have like a double surrender. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. It does seem like both Marriott and Hilton have kind of the same problem in that they're these lumpy mismatches of acquisitions. Like Marriott is just like a group of hotels that used to operate independently and still their brands feel very independent, but Marriott is still kind of running the show and everything. And they're like, well, here's how we're going to map all these benefits across all of them. And it's just chaos. And same with Hilton. You just really don't know what you're going to get in that regard. And same brand from one location to the other can be way off. So that's the problem with such a large footprint. Yes. Mm. Yes. We shouldn't be surprised that the hotel chain that has 12 credit cards is inconsistent. I mean, that's (laughs) a little bit chaotic, right? So this category is down to two. Mm. I'll let you go, Emily, first on consistency. No, 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 let him go. Okay. That's my tip. And we did jump out of order. The gentleman here did violate protocol by just helping himself. So more points deducted. He did already surrender the category, but yes, I will go ahead and jump on that. Yeah. I think that IHG has a real claim here for most consistent, and it really comes down to the fact that their program is quite simple and their footprint is quite simple. About two-thirds of IHG properties are Holiday Inns or Holiday Inn Expresses. They don't have the problem that you have with Hilton and Marriott where you have like this mismatch of acquisitions and brands that are still trying to behave differently in the same program. With IHG, I feel like I have a pretty good expectation of what I'm going to get. The elite benefits are candidly not fantastic. And I've already surrendered that category, but them not being fantastic makes them consistent. It's pretty much like free Wi-Fi. You can earn points a little bit faster. Like really their entire status program just allows you to earn points faster as you go up because they don't really have a great high end for their hotels where they can give you like the fancy breakfast credits and such. Like I think that the first credit listed on their site for reasons why you should join a program is free internet. (laughs) <laughs> which don't get me wrong is great but no one is like really excited to go to a hotel and be like, they have free internet that's fantastic but ihg is incredibly consistent i've stayed at pretty much all their brands at one point or another you know exactly what you're going to get it's very simple and straightforward i feel like one thing for ihg as well is in that middle tier right an embassy suites which is kind of as bryce mentioned it's an IHG. No, hell no. It's no. Oh, yeah, oh you guys wow. Stay Bridge. Unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. So much wow. fact. I was going to say how in Embassy Suites, yeah. like, it's always a consistent experience, great for families, but it's a Hilton. 
Uh oh. Have any rappers mm. ever made a song saying they're chilling at one of your brands? Because I got chilling <laughs> at the Holiday Inn. <laughs> <Point me. laughs> I mean, I will say in opposition to the consistency that you're talking about with IHG hotels is the fact that a lot of IHG brands that you might not desire to stay at in the U.S. are actually pretty yes. impressive abroad. Like staying in a Crown Plaza wouldn't really be on my list, but in Sydney, it was fantastic. It was beautiful. So negative one inconsistency because they're better elsewhere. <laughs> that is true. It feels like Crown Plazas in the United States, and I'd be curious here if you agree with this, somewhere in like the 80s, they had a competition of who could use like the most gold mirrored like, <laughs> decorations and every Crown Plaza won and none of them have changed ever since. Yeah. Mm. So you go there, it's just like a time warp, but you're right, you go abroad, I think I stayed at a Crown Plaza in Osaka and it's like, this is incredible. I was going into it with very low expectations and it was very nice. So I am defeating my own argument by saying that, <laughs> but you are absolutely right. Yeah. It sounds like the floor is basically Hyatt's to We have to, teed to this up for Hyatt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, it's old reliable. And I feel like I have experience because of my road trip that I took where I stayed pretty consistently in Hyatt houses, Hyatt places. You get the same thing everywhere. You're getting the waffle machine where you can like put your own little batter on it, flip it. That's everywhere. Where you do start to see inconsistency in a good way is with like the more luxury properties because they have so much variety. You get to experience a completely different level of service at the Ventana Big Sur than you would at a different type of property, even if it's another luxury property. So I really appreciate it for the variety. And I will also give a shout out to the Thompson brands, which are incredibly consistent oh, yes. Love and yeah. just fantastic service every time that we've been to one. So we're looking for sponsors. Thompson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we'll have stayed at four different Thompsons in the last like three months as yeah. a team. <laughs> yeah. And we love the Thompson brand so much that we actually altered our plans. We had originally booked a different hotel. We're going to LA in a couple of days. I think Matt saw first. There's a Thompson in LA now. We just canceled the other one. Yep. We're going to the Thompson. <laughs> I think like on the point of consistency, the best example that comes to mind for me of why Hyatt in my mind wins it is when I go to a Hyatt and it's disappointing, like when it's not what I expect, that's really disappointing to me. When I go to a Marriott, an IHG or a Hilton and it's below what I expected, it's just like, yeah, yeah that happens here. <laughs> You know, and that kind of you expect to be let but, down almost. Yeah, exactly. Like, but if you expect place. to be let down, doesn't that make it consistent? Because you're consistently oh. let down. Oh. Well, because you don't know where the let down is going to be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's more of a surprise that you're let down by Hyatt because the consistency, like the consistency, is so on point that Hyatt place room layouts are oh, virtually yeah. the, the same. same. They have like three room. different yeah. layouts, single yeah. one. Yeah. And so when I go, I know what to expect. I'm not worried about being let down or disappointed because of how much consistency the brand maintains. But yeah, a double tree or a courtyard, man, I feel man. like courtyard is some yeah. of the worst Sweet. of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we have to talk about the inconsistency of your upgraded room at the Marriott in San Diego. What did you have, like some bizarre red couch? Oh, yeah. yeah. I had like a conference room in there. There's like a... <laughs> I don't even remember. You don't this, remember? No. Yeah. Like it was like a dark room. Oh, like okay. All right. All right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I got upgraded to the president's yeah, suite. That's right. right. Yeah. It sounds fancy. And yeah. It did. Yeah. I was pretty excited about it. But yeah, I walked in. You know, it's really cool when you walk into a hotel room and you have like French doors to go in your room, not just a single door. <laughs> I walk in and it's like three hotel rooms in one, but the bed is just like out in the middle of the room. <laughs> There's like this big leather cow. I mean, this room looked like it hadn't been touched since the 80s, literally when the Crown Plazas were last touched. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I literally was like, can you please move me to another room? I'm going to take a regular room <laughs> take a instead of the presidential <laughs> suite. And I did. It was that bad. Yeah. Wow. I feel yeah. like there's a most consistent argument that just came to mind for me that makes all the difference that Hyatt wins. I have never stayed in a Hyatt my entire life in which there's not a plug that was right next to the bed, easily accessible. Oh. Mm. But I feel yeah. like when you're at, a, especially like a Marriott or Hilton, it's like a challenge. Yep. How can you plug in your phone How much furniture without, do I have like, to move? taking apart yep. the mattress? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or it's when like, they do try to put like the plugs in the base and the lamps. Oh, they don't work. Oh, they're either unbelievably loose, so like nothing yeah. will stay yep. in there, or they don't fit any sort of power block that comes with like modern technology. Yep. Yep. So you'll have to like prop the lamp up to get your <laughs> iPhone plug to go into it or something. It's insane. I think, and I know we've got other topics, but clearly we all care about Hyatt here. Another one that popped into my mind for Hyatt is I can think of one Hyatt I've been to and all of the Hyatts I've stayed at where the shower was just like a half piece of glass. Oh, was that's yeah. the worst. Those yeah, are the, yeah. and only that's one the Hyatt, but like I've had yeah. it at multiple yeah. Marriott's, multiple IHDs, multiple yeah. Hilton properties. Does anyone actually like that? No. I've never no. met anyone who's like, I'm so no. glad there's not a full no. shower door. Yeah. I like Have you ever seen like someone be glad about that? Yeah. 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 I'm glad the cold air comes into the shower. It's also not a topic I typically discuss with people, but well, yeah, don't have a lot of Here we are. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah. 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 
blowout victory. Yeah, Hyatt, yeah. I think, wins that one. Uh, oh, yeah. Undisputed. Yeah, yeah undisputed. Yeah. But we're kind of flipping the script on this next one. Most variety, mm. which is kind of the opposite side of that coin, but potentially not. So I'll let each of us make our case. In fact, I'm slated to go first here, and I'm just going to like bow out. IHG does not have much variety. <laughs> <at all. laughs> Hotel Motel Holiday Inn. That's uh-huh. it, right? Yeah. yeah. So for all the reasons why it was most consistent, I mentioned that two-thirds of their properties are Holiday Inn branded. So there is not a lot of variety there at all. I, with the one caveat that we kind of discussed earlier in that there are some properties, mostly in Asia, that will be under the same brand that you're used to here in the United States, but will just completely wow you. Intercontinental is one that comes to mind. Kimpton, Those are, of course, yeah. pretty good here in the United States as well, but some Kimpton of Kimpton now, recent. Oh yeah, yeah. Kimpton, the last couple and years. they have six senses now too. Yeah, Kimpton might be the outlier in that, Yeah, that claim, because mm-hmm. they're pretty good pretty much anywhere, and a lot of US presence. Yes. I stayed in Intercontinental in Osaka as well, and that was just absolutely incredible. And it's always nice to have a hotel stay when you're going into it and you're like, eh, I don't know about this. And you show up and it's like, wow. So Aichi, eh, I'm kind of surrendering this one, but adding a little bit of context there. And we'll jump back to Travis next. Most variety for Hilton. Look, here's the thing. Hilton might not have the most variety, but I think that's why Hilton actually wins this. How? Whoa. <laughs> How does Hilton win most variety without having the most variety? Easy, because <laughs> most variety is just a deceitful okay. category. You actually don't want to win this. Why? <laughs> Are you surrendering that? Because, no, 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 I'm not surrendering. I'm saying that like someone else might have the most variety, oh, but that this is yeah. a bad category to win. Okay. Mm. Right, mm. see, new tactic. It's sure. like when just you trash the, the category, trash the, just explain yeah, yeah, why exactly. it's not as uh-huh. valuable. Yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't have as much weight in your decision-making yeah. calculus as to which brand wins. Right, yeah. Most variety, not important. The reason it's not important <laughs> is because having fewer brands means less customer confusion. If I go and say at a Waldorf or a Conrad, I know what experience I'm going to get because those are the two real luxury brands. Except when you're let down. That Hilton Mm -hmm. has. I've never been let down by a Waldorf or a Conrad. Mm, Fair enough. Yeah. It's because there's fewer variety, there's a stronger brand identity and brand profile and brand standards. Let's take Ritz Carlton, for example. Anyone who's been to the Ritz Carlton in Aruba, which is a perfectly fine property, will ask themselves, how is this a Ritz? Like Ritz Carlton has this air of superiority in hotel brands, but the experience that you get is so different within that because there's not a clearly well-defined brand standard or identity. And I think a lot of that comes from the fact that Marriott is a mashup of Marriott, Ritz Carlton, SPG, which means they've got maybe 30 different brands in their hotel portfolio. 34 in case you're wondering. (laughs) Yeah, 34. It'll be 35 by the time this airs. Right, yeah. But it means, how do I even know if a Delta Hotels by Marriott is a good option? I don't. Like, where does that stack in the hierarchy? Mm -hmm. And when you go to the Marriott site, what they'll say is a luxury property. Like I said, Ritz-Carlton, they'll always tell you it's a luxury property, but you're not really always going to get that luxury experience that you expect because... There's just too much variety there for them to actually have it well-defined within each unique property brand. So most variety, sure, Hilton might not win, but I would say if you win this, that's probably negative points. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to follow up there. I feel like a lot of shots were that is, uh, directly and indirectly fired at who I'm supporting in this challenge here. I think, well, Travis wins most variety in like debate approach. Mm. Like he's attacking the attacking, category. Attacking the category, not, not the qualification. Mm. So plus one point, minus three. Net, net two. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, Hyatt next. Emily, yeah. tell us about the variety in Hyatt. Uh, I think they've got a lot of really unique properties. We talked about how it's most consistent, but there are properties like Ventana Big Sur, Andaz Papagayo, the Miraval properties. There's a lot of uh, uniqueness that I don't think is present in some of the other brands. So you forgot Hotel Motel Holiday. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, there was a, <laughs> I should have extended my arm. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. But there's a lot of room to experience a ton of different things. Like for people who haven't been to Ventana Big Sur, it's in the middle of like Redwood Forest. It's incredible. So you've got that and then you've got a Hyatt place where you're just going to get your free breakfast and walk out. Well, so. and don't forget Mr. and Mrs. Smith, where well, yeah. literally every single property is completely every single unique property. and different, which is pretty cool. Yeah, like losing the small luxury hotels was kind of a blow. But Who did adding- go to? 
Hilton. Went to Hilton, which mm. gave them more variety, which apparently is a bad thing. Right, yes. bad thing. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like, but the, the SLH identity is the uniqueness of each individual property. So it's its identity is uniqueness and variety. So that is good for that one brand because you know all the other brands are going to be consistent. So we've bundled up mm -hmm. together the uniqueness in one thing. How but, many brands you, can you book glamping on points with? Actually, you can with Hilton now. Ooh. Oh, damn it. Yeah. What's that? What's that? <laughs> I don't remember, but when I was researching for this, I saw one. It's a like camping brand that they have, and it actually kind of surprised me. Okay. Hmm. Well, yeah. I guess I don't have the leg up on that one, but Hyatt did just add, I think it's under canvas That's is right. what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So the redemption rates are not fantastic, but you do have the ability to book camping with points now. So that's pretty unique. There's a lot of variety in that. Agreed. Mary and Matt, tell us about the variety in as, as you've already heard from Mr. Hilton, tacking the category and the credentials, <laughs> Marriott will win this category, which is not oh. necessarily the category we want to win. <laughs> uh, 34 different hotel brands, which is part of the just everything's going to be different no matter what. You can never manage your expectations when you're staying at Marriott because they have so many different ones. A couple top tier ones like... Ritz Carlton, St. Regis, JW Marriott, all the way down to Fairfield Inns, courtyards on the lower end, and everything in between. They have too many brands. Mm. I will admit it. Yeah. Gives them variety. I, I mean, that's, that's literally yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So they get the variety, but I don't think that's actually what but, you want. But I do think Hyatt is the actual only one that rewards you for embracing the variety. That's fact. I was that just looking at my brand yeah. explorer yeah. actually yeah. over yeah. here to see where I'm at. One of the cool benefits about Hyatt is that if you stay at all their properties, I think for every 10 different properties you stay at, you get a free night. Buckets of five. Is it buckets five? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which used to be really hard when they no, were much smaller. It, yeah, it is five. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, so and every time they add another yeah. brand or two, it potentially yeah. unlocks another free night, which is kind of cool if you and, redeem it. And they'll yeah. often email out promos too. Oh, be yeah. like, it feels almost like Starbucks. Like come yeah. three times the next week and get bonus stars. We get email from Hyatt, like give us two Thompson stays and one Grand Hyatt stay in the next month and we'll give you a sweet upgrade award or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But those don't reset. So it's a one hit wonder. Yeah. But in five years from now, you might unlock a free night because you've closed another circuit of five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that is also nice that it doesn't reset. So yep. it's not a you have to earn it in this three month period. Mm -hmm. well, you can't really gamify it either no. yeah. too much. Yeah. So. We don't like when you can't gamify points. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> <don't like that. laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Up next, let's talk about wow factor. We're going to on this one start with I believe it's Emily's turn to go first. Oh, no. Hyatt, okay. Wow factor. Well, I already kind of like blew it by talking about Ventana Big Sur already. So there's that one. There's a lot of properties that have incredible service and are in really unique locations. I know the Andas in Costa Rica and Papagayo was on my list for sure. So that's one that has a wow factor for me. I just love how unique they are. And I feel like there's always something else that I can try that will wow me. So even though the uh, footprint is smaller, I think the quality really hits home for the wow factor. Excellent. Matt. With Mary, you just never know. You might be <laughs> blown away at a high-end hotel. That happened to me. And you might check into a hotel that should have been renovated 30 years ago. Mm. Also has happened to me. I mean, you just literally never know. Wow factor is not defined as being good wow. It could be like... That's true. Ooh, well, that's wow. fair enough. Fair enough. I like your attack in the category. Yeah. Expand the category. Whatever you have to do to win. Yep. IHG, not going to win on the wow factor, candidly. If you think about our engagements with readers and when we're talking, like, all right, where do you want to stay? Where do you want to go? You will hear folks mention like Ventana Big Sur. I can't think of a single instance in which someone's like, there's an IHG property that I really want to stay at. So they do have a few high end properties that we kind there's of There's a couple earlier. in Asia. The Intercontinental. There's a couple. Yeah. We should that's the one. Yeah, the that's the one. And, and then you have like the Intercontinental in Bora Bora, which is like an all bungalow yeah. property. Mm. But like I was looking at rates last night and kind of prepping for this, and it's like, 198,000 points per night. So yeah. mm. save up like, you know, a year worth of points. You might be able to get one free night and then the cash rate beyond that's going to be out. It's just ridiculous. So there's a few options, but I don't think IHE is going to take the cake here. So we'll turn it over to Mr. Hilton. It's okay. Hilton does take the cake <laughs> here. I think Emily has put up a really good fight with Hyatt. And I would probably say that Hyatt challenges Hilton on this the most. Merritt has some fantastic properties out there. It's just your experience could differ. But this goes back to what I said about when you go to a Waldorf, you're getting a Waldorf experience, whether it's the Waldorf in Orlando, which great way to is, do yeah. Disney. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, great really it's great to do Disney or whether it's one of some of the most aspirational properties. I think when people talk about some of the most aspirational properties in points and miles, Hilton starts really creeping up there. You've got the Waldorf in the Maldives, the Waldorf in Cabo, 
the Waldorf in Beverly Hills, the Conrad in the Maldives, the Conrad in Bora Bora. There's a number of properties that fall into the Hilton portfolio that are really up there, really unique. You know, the Conrad Kosamui is one that's been on my mind for a long mm -hmm. time. It's built like on this hill. There are all these big, basically individual buildings on stilts just along the hillside overlooking the water in Thailand. How many points is it going to cost you to stay there? 90, last I checked, 95000 a night. Okay. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So if you can find. They have pretty good availability there. Nights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And especially once you factor in your fifth night free. Uh, which helps okay. bring down your average cost. Oh, I see that where was, we're going that was a little there. dig in case she didn't catch it. Oh, no, yeah. I, I that was, caught that it. Why well is it the fourth like she has, though? Yeah. I mean, that seems worse, right? <laughs> Only if you have a credit card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're $99 fee at most, Like, but yes. When it comes to wow factor, whether it's a city hotel like the Waldorf in Beverly Hills, which a lot of people consider to be one of the best city hotels anywhere in the U.S., maybe even the world, although big shout out to the Park Hyatt Sydney from what mm. I hear. Yes. And the breakfast like, buffet was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I really think that once you start paying attention to those aspirational properties, whereas IHG has a handful, uh, Marriott's got some too, like for sure. Let's not discount. Marriott. I think the biggest round there is the property can be unbelievable, but the service may not match up or vice versa. Yeah. I mean, I was pretty disappointed in my service at the St. Regis Maldives. Beautiful yeah. property, but like the service was just a little off. I think that that wow factor from the Hilton properties is a little understated compared to others, but that there's a reason why people get much more excited for availability at the Waldorf Maldives than the St. Regis or the Ritz or the W or the JW Marriott. Sorry, Marriott. I was just like, I, <laughs> not a, I can't argue. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I like the day. I don't know if you caught it, but that was, yeah, that was, that was a good day. That yeah, was really no. good. Well, I think let's keep moving forward. And this next category is going to kind of throw a bone to Marriott, and I'll even let you go first. Well, sympathy right? category. Amenities, right? The best amenities, kind of like unique, off the wall things that you can expect when staying at this portfolio of brands, if you will. Well, the first one comes to mind. It's less of an amenity and more just awesome, but it's hard to overlook the daily savoring of champagne at St. Regis. <laughs> Total gimmick. I don't even know if you would consider it an amenity, but it's just awesome. I don't know that I, there's I anything else there that yeah. compares. Yeah. Well, it's not, yeah. it's not just the savor. They savor it and then they serve it. To yeah. Yeah. It's not completely around, wasted. So it's not yeah, just yeah, a show. Yeah. yeah. Well, except that when they tell you that it starts at six and you show up at 610, they've already distributed all of it and there's no more champagne. Well, you're 10 well, minutes late. late. I would Even call though they that told most you, consistent. They said it runs from six to seven. So that to me implied, mm. oh, if I show up between six and seven, mm. I can get a free glass of champagne. Mm. And then you show up very early on in that time period mm. and they say, we're out, sorry. If you're on time, you're late, Travis. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing that there is no time restriction on the best amenity at Hilton's, the which would be... best amenity is the Double Tree chocolate chip cookies. I've never yes, had respect, a Double Tree respect. chocolate chip cookie. Well, you're really missing they're actually, out. They're really good. They're warm. So okay. it's probably been 20 years since I've had one, but in my memory, they're unbelievable. They might be disgusting now. I have no <laughs> they clue, might be, but... Yeah. That's how we were, I feel about Dippin' Dots. Yeah, right. Yeah, we were yeah. just talking about yeah. this. Yeah. I mean, it's... Good enough that they publish the recipe for people. Oh, fair enough. So, oh, you know, I haven't. Have looked, you are you about to bring out a plate behind your chair yeah. of <laughs> ones that you make, in a make for us? Yeah. In-person podcasting episode, we have to make the cookies. Mm -hmm. Yes, like that's this just going to be the episode. Show at yeah, some right. Point yeah. Soon. yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> sheep pan dinners. Yeah, right. boom. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cookies are a dinner, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll go to you, Emily. Best amenity, Hyatt. My personal favorite amenity is again Fantana and Big Sur. I will not stop talking about it because how could you? They deliver a s'mores kit and also delicious cookies. We'll have to compare, but to your room so that you can use the fireplace in your room to make a little s'mores kit. It's pretty good. All of these are pale in comparison to IHG's free Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your cookies without Wi-Fi. Right. right? Yeah, because of basic getting the recipe. Enhanced Wi-Fi. Ooh, I think you have to pay more for enhanced. Yeah, yeah it's just basic. Yeah. So you don't try to stream anything. There's only one Ventana Big Sur. Yeah. There's a lot of double trees. If you're under uh, 21 in the U.S. or under whatever the drinking age is in your legal country, you can't take advantage of the champagne savoring. Mm. People of all ages and the larger number of double trees means that the amenity is more accessible for more people. I'll wow, play in the accessibility card Ooh. now. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's not the most accessible amenity, sir. Uh, all right. We've got a couple more categories to go before we move into closing arguments. Up next is path to status, talking about how easy or doable it is to earn a worthwhile status with your hotel brand. I believe we are up to Matt to go first on this one. Awesome. 
Well, Marriott is a respectable organization that does not allow you to buy your way to top tier status. <laughs> they do offer your platinum status, which is their, I guess you'd say mid tier status offering, but it's pretty much all most people need because you get priority access to upgrades, free breakfast as you try and navigate all the different breakfast offerings that we've talked about earlier. Um, but you can get those on the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card from American Express and the Ritz Carlton card that's issued by Chase. But the rest of the cards that they have most of the remaining 10, I guess you would say. Some of them do offer elite status, maybe gold or silver, but they all offer elite night credits of some varying quantity. I think the lowest would be 10 and the highest would be 25. You just have to kind of check to see what some of those are, but it really makes qualifying for elite status pretty easy because it gives you a fast track, but you still do have to earn it the hard way. Mm. For example, I start out every year with 40 elite night credits for Marriott because I have a personal and a business card. So I still have to put in a little bit of work to get to 75 for the titanium. And I do feel that with Marriott, and this is with Hilton as well, holders of the uh, platinum card by American Express immediately get gold status yep, each yep. of these brands. But I do feel like kind of like the Hilton card offer scenario I mentioned earlier, most people who see that assume like, all right, I'm going to walk right in and get the presidential suite with yeah. the weird red couch or whatever. <laughs> but uh, it's generally not as good as one would think when you say gold, gold status. Gold tier. was great back with SVG after that. It's not quite worthless, but it's it's pretty close. Yeah. Unless you're thirsty, because I think that's where you start to get the bottle of water. <laughs> oh, yeah. The free yeah. water. <laughs> cool. So I'll go next on this one. IHG has a relatively simple path to status, although the status, as I mentioned earlier, is, is a lot more simple, straightforward, and doesn't have the frills that you'd have with other brands. I believe they have five status levels. You get all the way to number four just by having either their personal or business card, the ones that have the $99 annual fees. It's called Platinum Elite. That gets you the free Wi-Fi. You get one category room upgrade, but when two thirds of the properties are holiday ends, don't get too excited. And you can earn points. I think it's 80% bonus earnings on points and spend when you have that status. Beyond that, you have to get up to 60 nights a year, I believe, to get to their top tier ambassador status. I truly don't know anyone who's ever done that before because if you're staying at bulk hotels, you're probably not picking IHGs. And they do have one kind of nuance in that you can buy their ambassador level status for $200 per year. Shame. Or I know, I mean, I'm not even gonna defend it. <laughs> you don't even have to have ever stayed there. You can go on their website right now and buy ambassador status for $200 per year, which gets you, I believe, two category room upgrades. Again, most held hands. And you get guaranteed late checkout at 4 p.m., free Wi-Fi and free breakfast at participating locations, which right. tends to not be fantastic. So it's pretty simple. You can buy your way nearly to the top, but because of their limited property range, there's just not a lot to be had. I was going to say $200 seems low for top tier status, but then when you consider what you're getting for that. Right, um, yeah. It feels like you, you can park outside like your room card. at the Holiday Inn Express you're staying at <laughs> yeah. as a top tier IHG member. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, let's go back around to Travis here on path to status. One card, top tier status. Don't have to work for it. You just might have to work for the benefits you get from it, like the upgrade. <laughs> you Since everybody's gotta, diamond, is that right? you got to work for the, what, $550 to pay the annual fee to get that yeah. card. Is it $550 or $450? It's one of those. Of it's not I a think, small amount of money. I think it's still $450. It is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. It's Semantics. A yeah. It's, it's a lot of money. Well, it's less money than you'll need to spend for those additional, like, 20 nights at Marriott. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. And you get it right away, too. So. You get it right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quick argument. High path and status? Yeah, I feel like because of the consistency and the variety within Hyatt, the top tier status of globalists is the most valuable out of any here. So in order to reach that, you have to stay 60 nights or get 100,000 base points. And you can use the credit cards, the personal and the business card to spend your way there. If you never stayed at a Hyatt property, you'd have to spend $120,000 on the business sure. card in order to get to globalist level status so obviously if you can do some like stay at the hotel for a few nights and complement it with putting spend on a credit card then you can get there relatively simply what is it five nights for every ten thousand dollars you spend on the business card so there's a way to do it pretty simply and the perks that you get are incredibly consistent across yeah, the properties simply, it just costs you one hundred twenty thousand dollars i mean it's simple it's not easy yeah. but it is simple <laughs> <laughs> why don't you telling her about the work you have to put in for the hundred and twenty thousand dollars Spend 120000 <laughs> spend 450 yeah. These things right. are about the same, right? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. yeah, it's close. Yeah. But I, I mean, it sounds like IHG is probably the cheapest to top tier status, but maybe the, the most top, top worthless? Tier, no, but yeah. The most worthless. <laughs> I mean, Hyatt you'll be might be the best, at the but will you ever actually get there? No, you just I have to be Matt's it. friend. Yeah, as I say, we, we yeah. should mention that it's unique to Hyatt when you get global yeah. status, the guest of honor feature. And our next category is signature factor, of which that's not even mentioned. I didn't because, even. It, because there's a better one. But the guest of honor status is truly great. Yeah. You can They did just text it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. They reined it in a little bit. Yeah. Womp, have, womp. Yeah. Used to be unlimited. And now you get passes, essentially, as you meet certain thresholds, uh, like okay. elite nights, essentially. So 
That was fun when it was unlimited, yeah. though. It's still good for the rest of this year. Mm -hmm. I guess until February for me. So I mean, if it was still unlimited, path to status for how it becomes simple, it's called befriend someone with status. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bingo. And you effectively yep. have status, right? <laughs> Bingo. Bingo. Start a podcast, get people on it who have mm -hmm. globalists, and then just be like, please help me learn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how much easier can that get, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. The last one here before closing arguments is the signature factor. This is something that really sets your program apart from others. Maybe the best feature would be one way to call it. We are back to me to go first here. And I think the IHG is in the competition here because IHG has a fourth award night free benefit. When you are booking any IHG stay on points, the fourth night is free. And that's even if not exactly a four night booking. There's no games played with it. If it's a 10 night booking, you get the fourth and the eighth night free. That is a fantastic feature. You do have to be an IHG card holder to get that. But I have to imagine that if you're booking for award nights at IHG, you already are one. That is perhaps the most lucrative X number night award free night that I'm aware of in the entire space. I've used that many times before and I'm a big fan of it. And that is the end of that debate we win. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go back over to Travis for Hilton Signature Factor. When you book five nights with points, you get the fifth night free. Granted, that is not unique to Hilton, but Hilton also has some absolutely phenomenal and aspirational properties. Hilton has a really sneaky award chart. I've talked about this in other episodes where Bryce is talking about how Oh, yeah, 60,000 points or whatever for a double tree at an airport. Yep. But what makes Hilton's award chart so unique is the fact that you can actually get value from it from transferring Amex points as well as from Hilton points you get directly. I don't really think any other brand can boast that, right? Emily kind of conceded mm. like transferring chase points rather than opening those cards. Who knows what Marriott cards you can get, but I you got nothing. should <laughs> generally not be transferring bank points to Marriott. IHG kind of the same boat. It's not worth the transfer ratio, but because Amex transfers one to two, meaning for every one Amex point you transfer, you get two Hilton points. That 90, 100,000 point per night property is actually 45 to 50. If you're doing five nights and you add that fifth night free, can't do that much math in my head, but it lowers it even more. So the sneakiness of the award chart to combine bank points plus the points you've earned directly I think that that's the best factor of Hilton is the fact that whether you're earning the points from the card or transferring from American Express, Hilton's bank partner, it's a good value either way. And that's something that I don't really think any other of the brands mentioned here have. You are not wrong. No, fair. <laughs> Emily, tell us about Hyatt's signature factor. For me, it's the favorable award chart. Like Travis is saying, he's trying to make an argument that Hilton's are going to be cheaper less expensive if you transfer Amex points, which is not wrong, but the Hyatt award chart, you're going to get like a comparable hotel to the Waldorf or the Conrad for 35,000 points per night, 40,000 points per night. So that's really the highest you're going to see for Hyatt. So when you're trying to stay at a Hyatt place or a Hyatt house, those are like 8,000 points per night, 10,000 points per night. It's really the difference between a shorter vacation and a much longer vacation. So for me, the signature factor is the award chart, I will not gloss over the fact that there are no additional free nights when you book multiple nights with points. So you're not getting that benefit, but that's kind of baked into the lower costs. Yeah, the predictability and the cost of that award chart are truly fantastic. And where you do see that come out, where I've seen that in my own travels, are booking kind of low level Hyatts that are suddenly super popular for some reason or another. Mm. One example that comes to mind is I, I say the Hyatt house to go to the Ares tour with Taylor Swift. I mean, it's not a great Hyatt. It was like in Cincinnati. Like no one's getting excited about that. But it's 800 and some dollars per night because it was next door to the stadium that Taylor's performing at. People are fighting to book these rooms. They're going to sell out. And I booked it for like 9,000 Hyatt points per night. I find that many Hyatt points in the couch when I get up between the cushions. <laughs> so. or, or like the Hyatt house Augusta as well. If you're going to the Masters, insanely expensive. But Hyatt does not completely ratchet up all the points on that. You can still do it. So point Hyatt on that one. So long as they keep that award chart. Yeah. So please, Hyatt. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't break the award chart. We'll be so sad. Let's go to Merritt. Matt. Uh, Merritt concedes the category. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Merritt has no signature factors that do not overlap with anything mentioned here, and they're all negative. So here's what I'll give to Merritt. <laughs> yep. All right, I'll, I'm interested. I'll give this to Merritt. Merritt, out of all of these brands, probably doesn't play with award nights the most. Some of the signature properties, you're generally going to be able to find award nights. But Hyatt, Hyatt's probably the worst at this. Sorry, Hyatt, mm. but like the Andaz at Maui, good luck ever finding an award night mm. there. 
Hyatt's. The hotels in the Hyatt portfolio will play around with things where you can't find a word availability. And that generally doesn't happen with Marriott. I agree primarily. However, since Marriott rolled out the ability to top off the free night certificates up to 15,000 points, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a hotel that's 66,000 points where I could use a 50K free night certificate, top it off to 65,000 points. Yeah and it's 1,000 points out of reach. So yeah. yes, but I have seen a lot of that since that rolled out maybe two years ago or so. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like a great way to upset your customers. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. short, you yeah. know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like that commercial, the guy with the dollar bill on the end of the fishing pole. Oh, almost got it. Yeah, it's <laughs> those vibes. All you have to do is listen to one timeshare presentation and get like an extra 1,000 points. Yeah. Unbelievable. No. <laughs> two hours of your time for 1,000 points, right. you wouldn't yeah. do it? Exactly. That's a great, <laughs> no. great deal. Yeah. <laughs> So we're getting up next to closing arguments. And now here, I do feel like the order in which we go is kind of important. So I want to throw a bit of a curveball here. Mm. We're going to play some rock, paper, scissors, shoot. We're going to have you two play against each other. We're going to play against each other. Winners play each other. Yeah. Poor. I have very limited closing arguments. Okay. I I well, we still have some determined order here. So ready? We're going to play rock, paper, scissors, shoot. You two play each other. We're going to play each other. Okay. All right, ready? Rock, Wait, paper, scissors, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. Rock, paper, rock, paper scissors, shoot. shoot. All right. So you beat me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wait, we're doing best two out of three? Nope, just one. It sounded like y'all did it twice. <laughs> well, we tied. No, well, we tied. Yeah. But you've oh, been okay. negotiating the category <laughs> while we were gone ahead. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Okay, so Emily plays Matt. Winner goes first. Loser goes second. And then Travis and I, we got to play for the bronze medal here if you want. Ready? Okay. Oh. Rock, paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Wait, what? All right. Wait, no, we don't have <laughs> to play each other. I should go for Yeah, yeah, because you both won. Yeah. Now, this yeah. is the championship game. Yeah, yeah. this is, oh, all right. so this is the other. Olympics. I don't know what yeah. you guys are watching on this TV, is the but Olympics. this is... Rock, paper, scissors, shoot has to be an Olympic sport. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm sure it yeah. is. Break dancing is. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Well, let's not alienate our break dancing. I'm not into alienating. I feel like we just lost our entire swath of readers who are Cheesecake Factory fans. Right. So sorry about that. All right, so you, you two play. Here we right. go. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. All right. Okay, so here's the key. Okay. Is it best to go first or last? You can choose. Oh, if I was going, I'd go first right now. Okay, let's do that. So Emily okay. is the ultimate winner. So first, second, oh, third, Maybe that was reverse fourth. psychology. Oh, oh, Jesus. Boom, I get to go last. I would have picked last. So. <laughs> All right, time for closing arguments. Emily, tell us why Hyatt is the best program overall. Plain and simple, Hyatt is 90% of the time going to be the most effective brand for people in the points and miles space looking to maximize the value of their points. Like I said before, it can be the difference between like one vacation a year that you're going on points and three, four, maybe, depending on what tier you're staying at, whether you're staying at a Hyatt, uh, Hyatt house or at a Park Hyatt. So you can get way more out of your points if you're booking with Hyatt. I also think it's really great because it's great for beginners, but there's a lot of aspirational properties to work towards too. So it's not just, okay, you're new in the space, you're earning Chase Ultimate Rewards, you're just going to stick with Hyatt. You can start out by booking multiple vacations a year, staying at lower end properties, and then you can still kind of, I'm going to save up my points and I'm going to shoot for the Andas in Maui and hope you can find a single night. But <laughs> I think it's just all around a great place to start and it's not limiting as you get more advanced in Wasabi. Excellent. Matt, you are next. Marriott's an interesting place in the world of points and miles. This is not Marriott of five years ago, which would have been a much stronger contender in this Thunderdome. That's we right. earlier, yeah. <laughs> so on the one hand, it's relatively easy to earn points, not quite Hyatt status, but excuse me, Hilton, but pretty close on your spend, uh, especially if you have co-branding cards and status, but you can almost never justify transferring flexible points to Marriott. So unless you're topping off a few thousand here or there, I don't think you'll find anybody that ever recommends you transfer points to this program from both American Express or Chase. So you're kind of stuck in that you would have to concede that to Hyatt and Hilton because those are both great options for this. But on the flip side, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm leaving you out. But on the flip side, they have the biggest footprint. So they're literally everywhere. And so wherever in the world you're trying to go, there's probably going to be a Marriott there. And so you'll have to evaluate and hope you have some points to use or hope they have low cash rates so you can earn points on them. And then the flip side also is just the quality of the experience is literally all over the chart. So this is not my closing argument to win. It's just a... <laughs> this is just this the is, end. This, this is, is reality. This is, this is an reality. <laughs> the man's honest. Uh, right? Yeah. And they've essentially abandoned an award chart. So you can also almost never be able to plan for a redemption you want to make far out in the future because you literally have no idea what it's going to cost because there's no award chart. So it's very much a conundrum because I want to try and defend them and tell you why they should win, but they can't because of the reasons I outlined above. Where Marriott does win is they're the only winner up here that has a very prominent hashtag, Bonvoid. Mm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a positive. It's not no, a good thing. It's no. not. <laughs> Travis, you're next. I might as well be going last because we all know IHG doesn't stand a chance amongst <laughs> any of What these. did I do? <laughs> <laughs> the reason why Hilton wins is for a number of reasons. It wins the important categories. Your luxury experiences are dialed in. Your ability to earn points 
has the most variety out of any of the options here. Whether you're earning from the Hilton cards directly, from paid stays, like you earn an incredible amount of points at Hilton when you pay with your card to stay there. Or if you're transferring points from American Express. That gives you a lot of avenues to build up your Hilton points really fast. Additionally, it's got that sneaky award chart. You add that fifth night free and transfer some points in, and it's basically bringing properties roughly in tier with Hyatt's. Emily's going to try to convince you that that's an advantage of Hyatt. It's basically null and void. Oh, okay. She already uh, went, by the way, too. So yeah. she, I mean, <laughs> you've also got four cards with no family restrictions that you can earn the bonus on. So you've got the competitive award chart. You've got probably the best family of cards here. You've got the benefit that it makes, it actually makes sense to transfer bank points there, which it doesn't for Marriott and IHG. You can get top tier status really easily. And even if those benefits and those experience from the status is inconsistent, let's be honest, if I'm just getting a $10 breakfast credit, let me go out and enjoy breakfast somewhere that's not my hotel. Sure, it would be nice to be able to use that there, but I think a lot of times it's one of those benefits that's really might even just be a little bit of a drawback. So for what matters, it seems clear to me that there's no option but Hilton. Strong case. Yeah. I'll go last year with IHG. <laughs> I feel like IHG is often overlooked by a lot of the readers that I talk to and a lot of people in general because of that brand confusion. Generally, when folks are working their way through points and miles following our conventional strategy, they, they reach IHG and they're always asking, what is IHG? Like, is that a hotel? Is that an airline? I'm not even certain. <laughs> so IHG branding folks, if you're watching this, you got to work on that, really. <laughs> but IHG has a case to be made here because it is a relatively simple, straightforward program overall. You get almost all the way to the top of their status with a very simple credit card with a $99 annual fee, either a personal or business one. Their card portfolio is pretty good, issued by Chase. They have pretty high bonuses. IHG's award chart can go all the way down to 10,000 points per night. So you can get a lot of bulk or like quantity over quality, if you will. Fourth award night free. So if you're trying to stay for a lengthy period of time and you're not looking for something that's really high end and blow all your points, IHG is going to be the one for you. And it's just simple to understand. They don't have 12 credit cards. They don't have crazy different brands and all the inconsistencies that we've talked about earlier. It's simple. It's straightforward. It's easy to understand once you can get past the idea of like what is IHG. So for that reason, I think IHG wins. Yeah, but you don't have cookies. Mm. There's no counter arguments to be made here, sir. Right. Decorum must so. be respected. <laughs> I do think there is one important thing for our readers, and we're going to do this for everyone, and I'll even let Hilton go first. Oh, <laughs> oh you'll let, let it. Let okay. go first. Oh, no, no, no. I think we, we can talk about this, right? And obviously, like, there's a lot of debate that we can have about this for education and fun, right? I enjoy doing this, but I'm sharing the points with a little bit more vigor and bias and to help people be able to frame this at the end of the day the most valuable program is the one where you're getting the most valuable experience from which generally for most people isn't going to be status free breakfast even cookies it's going to be which program are you most often able to redeem your points for free nights from so we're not going to go hotel by hotel. But what I'm going to say is that the program with which I most often out of these four end up using to redeem for free nights, it's probably a close tie between Hyatt and Marriott. I definitely use those more than I use Hilton or IHG. It goes back and forth. Like a few years ago, it definitely was Hyatt. It's been Marriott more recently, but I would say over my career in points and miles, those are the two that I've definitely used the most. And so to help our readers understand our inherent biases, I'd like to ask you all, and I know that this is unscripted, but which of these programs do you actually find yourself using the most? Yeah, definitely Hyatt. I mean, for the first time, I transferred Amex points to Hilton for a stay that was longer than just like one night. So... I haven't stayed there yet. I'll let you know how it is. It's an SLH hotel, oh. which is nice because yeah. it's that's new to the property. It. Yeah. So, yeah, I really haven't done that much before. It's pretty much been Hyatt. I have taken a number of Marriott stays, though, too, because I have many of the cards that are available and a lot of them come with free nights. So that's an easy like, oh, shoot, I'm, I need to be at the airport super early in the morning tomorrow. I'd rather just go there tonight and use a free night and stay there. So most of my Marriott stays are pretty short. For me, it's Hyatt, especially this year because I've been globalist, which has been fun. So I've definitely leaned more towards Hyatt. I typically do just because it's such a great way to use points. And it's hard to overlook if there's a nice Hyatt or even just a Hyatt place or Hyatt house, depending on what you're doing. But over the years, it's been Marriott, so. Yeah, definitely Hyatt for me for all the same reasons that I mentioned earlier. So easy, great award chart. 
he's earned the points with Chase Hilton Awards. Yeah. yeah. You should still vote for Hilton. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> and as you're voting, I feel like we have to emphasize that it is not choose one at the exclusion of the others, right? Let me go and guess. How many of you have accounts with all four of these brands? Yeah. All of us. How many of you have oh. made a redemption? Wait, you don't have I, an IG account? I don't have an IG account. Get out. I don't need one. <laughs> you don't need one. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, most of us use all of these. And there's a combination. There's going to be reasons to do one or the other. You don't have to be completely loyal to one. You should be balancing all these things for all the reasons you heard on this podcast today. That's what we are all doing. So. Yeah, I mean, this year I will have done redemptions with Hilton, Hyatt, Marriott. I think I've done a Wyndham as well. Hmm. Um, Definitely a travel lodge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've come close with IHG. It's kind of like Bryce said, one that I myself have not used that much, but I've looked into it for whatever credit that gets. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Like at the end of the day, you're here to get free travel. And this idea of being loyal to one brand or the other isn't necessarily the right way to think about it. It's find the value that you can find right now and be willing to pivot away from that when your strategy just needs to change because it makes more sense. Be able to find that value in all of them. The sake of this debate is more, hopefully for your entertainment, definitely for our entertainment, is <laughs> yeah, a fun. fun format to present this information to you so that way you can learn. So even though I know all of you are going to end up voting for Hilton anyways, right. understand that choosing Hilton doesn't mean that you shouldn't be trying to get value from Hyatt, shouldn't be trying to get value from Marriott. Bryce picked last is why he got IHG. I, I didn't even pick. I was told two days ago we were doing this. And it was between what Wyndham and IHG. And I was like, all right, IHG. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this was fun. So to kind of wrap things up here, whether you're brand new to Points and Miles or are an expert, we would encourage you to sign up for our paid membership program, 10X Travel Plus, where you'll have the opportunity to schedule one-on-one -on -one consults with us or other members of our 10X Perk team. Maybe you're trying to dial in that hotel strategy. You're not sure which one's going to apply to you. You can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. We can kind of walk through and make sure you're doing things right. Be sure to check out My 10X, our free tool that allows you to manage all of your points and miles in one single place. Link your cards, get next card recommendations, see those point totals grow, 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 and just before you redeem them for any of these fine hotels. You can find more information on that at my.10xtravel.com. And of course, join our Facebook group, the largest Facebook group in points and miles, over 340,000 members right now, 10xtravel.com insiders. You can just search it on Facebook or it's linked all over our site and in the show notes. And for all of us here at 10x Travel, I'm Bryce Conway. This is Take Off, a podcast. And now I guess, could you call it a show? <laughs> oh, well, show don't forget Travel. to like and subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Forget, yeah. Oh, I've always wanted to say it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I mean, if you don't say it, does it really count? No, right. no I, definitely people not. People would definitely forget, right? Yeah. Don't forget to like, like and subscribe. I don't know if they've moved the buttons or if I'm even doing that right, but be sure to do that. And we so appreciate you joining us here today. We'll talk to you on the next episode. Goodbye.